Welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this compilation we are looking at classic cars in Germany. Big thanks to Oliver who sent over all the photographs here, taken at two classic car shows in and around the Berlin area in 2023. And, to begin with... There is uh, Oliver's Mercedes on the left there, fantastic little Mercedes 207 dropside truck. Oliver was kind enough to send me a calendar he had printed featuring his lovely little Mercedes in it, so thanks also for that one. Um, yeah, this is a really interesting selection of classic vehicles in this video, so I hope you'll enjoy this one. And how about this? A Reliant Scimitar GTE, one of the SC6 Reliant Scimitars. Who expected to see one of those? over in Germany, it's a German registered. I can't quite see if it's left-hand drive or right-hand drive. Did they do left-hand drive versions of the Reliant Scimitar? I do not know. Okay, next up we have this, a Rober, or Robber. Apologies for my pronunciations throughout this video, but I'll do my best. And apparently this was a truck built in East Germany when, obviously, uh, the country was split in two at the time. Next up, this handsome machine here is an Opel Record, one of the Opel Record D cars from... These were built 1972 through to 1977 and it's a distant cousin to the Vauxhall Victor FE. If you look down the side of it, you'll see it's very familiar to Vauxhall Victor owners in this country. And here's a magnificent Mercedes-based camper van. What an incredible looking vehicle that is. Uh, I remember seeing one of these when we went camping as a youth in the mid-1980s in France and there was one of these on the campsite and I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this thing pull onto the campsite. Absolutely incredible looking vehicle. Oh, what about this? What a little beauty this is. At first glance it looks like a Fiat Topolino, uh, sort of circa 1937 onwards, but this is the Simca 8, the French built equivalent of the Fiat Topolino. All 1089cc of it, four cylinder engine with that bonnet there. And uh, yeah, what an incredibly original looking car this is. Just look at the detail on the rear corner of the same car. I do love those lights and the little mountings for the lights as well. What a great survivor car that is. I really, really like that one. And of course, we do see these fairly often at shows here in the UK, and there's bound to be quite a few turning up at French, uh, German shows as well. And this, of course, is the Messerschmitt, the KR200, with the uh, 191cc air-cooled engine, the two-stroke engine. This is the bubble-top version. There is also the Cabriolet version available too. And back to classic campers in Germany again. And we have this, the Mercedes-based Hanomag Henschel, the 206D pop-top camper. Very, very practical vehicle indeed. That looks perfect for a weekend away at a classic car show. Well, yeah, just fantastically practical vehicle. Great stuff. Now, you probably recognise these. These have appeared in videos here on Old Classic Car before. This is the Borgward Isabella. This is the combi or the estate version of the uh, Isabella. Two-door estate. A fine-looking motor car it is too. I really, really like those. We'll see other examples of this particular model later in the video. And how about a few classic tractors? Got some Hannah Mags there. Very, very nice condition as well. Uh, yeah, so anyway, thanks again to Oliver for sending over all these photographs and indeed the calendar because uh, it was a real treat to receive this set of photos. Such a different variety of cars feature in this particular video compared to normal. And saying that, here we have a British car here again. Another example of the Reliance Scimitar GTE. And we'll see another photograph of this one a little later in this compilation. So I didn't realise Reliance had a big following in Germany, but maybe, maybe they do. And what's that alongside an Austin Allegro, no less? Probably the oldest car to feature in this compilation is this really early 20th century international truck. Left-hand drive, can't see much sign of any brakes on the front axle there, wooden wheels. What a fantastic vehicle that is. If you can shed any light on the specification of that um, machine, please let me know in the comments. Next up, we have an Opel Monza, an A1 series Opel Monza. These were built from, I think, 1977 through to 1982. And this looks pretty familiar. This is the Taunus or Taunus two-door version and very very similar to our own Ford Cortina Mark IV of course. This uh, metallic green two-door car looks to be in immaculate condition. And there is that Borgward Isabella combi parked alongside it. 
What a great pair of cars. Now, I admit not to know much about this one. It's a Magyar's Deutz truck. I'm guessing, what, 1980s or 1990s even. Possibly military, but more than that, I do not know. So if you can shed more light on this one, please pop a note into the comment section. Always great to read your thoughts on the cars that feature in these videos. Now, this is nice. This is a quite a handsome-looking estate car. It's a pale blue Opel Record C combi version and these were introduced in 1966 i believe and continued in production until about 1971 there's a scimitar behind it and what a sweet little car this is an auto union dkw f12 roadster a little three-cylinder powered roadster and yeah what a sweet little car that is Continuing this look at classic cars in Germany, we would, of course, have quite a few Mercedes-Benz. And here we have one of the Pagoda Roof Mercedes-Benz SLs. A fine-looking motor car indeed. Oliver tends to try and photograph the more unusual cars at these shows. So, yeah, that's what we are going to see in this particular upload. And how about this? I've only seen one of these in recent years. It was at the Hopley House meeting, the Audi 100 Coupe. What a fine looking car. That is shades of Aston Martin, I always think, and especially in the side profile of these particular cars. There's another view of the Audi in the middle there with a red 124 series Mercedes estate alongside, and in the foreground, the mighty Chevrolet. And there we go, a rear view of the Scimitar, the SE6 Series Scimitar GTE, complete with vinyl roof and full-length folding sunroof. So that would make for a great GT car, especially on the autobahns, I would have thought. Big V6 Ford engine in the front and Wolf Race alloy wheels on this example. Love the little Alfa Romeo Berlina here, the little four-door saloon based on the Giulia. And what a cracking little car that is. Quite an unusual colour as well. You don't often see them in that sort of beige type colour. Yeah, what a treat to see that one. Next up in this collection of classic German cars, we have this. So I think it's an Audi 80, a combi, the estate version. The Audi 80 F103 series, I think this is. First introduced in 1966 and built until 1972. Left-hand drive, of course, because we're in Germany. But yeah, that's a nice looking car, I think. We do see these occasionally over here, the VW T3s, uh, apparently Vatro Gasky. I apologise again for my pronunciation, literally means firefighters, and clearly this is a firefighting related vehicle. Very, very nice. Look at that MGB in the background as well. Very bonny little estate car here. This is an Opel Cadet B. From, um, these were built from 1965 through to 73, and this is the two-door estate, or caravan, as it was called in the sales brochures at the time. And alongside that is an Ascona A-type, the Opel Ascona, the early one. Very, very nice too. And wow, look at this, a Fintail Mercedes, but not like one I've ever seen before. This is the limousine version of the Fintail, or the, the Heckflosser as it's called in Germany, I believe. But what's that on the roof? I do not know. Is it some sort of camping pod? I really, really don't know. So please let me know in the comments. And a trio of classic Unimogs here. I do like that. Their tent arrangement on the roof of the one in the middle. That's a very, very cool looking vehicle. Go anywhere in that one, wouldn't you? Back to Opals now, and we have the Opal Manta A-Type, a very, very sharp-looking example in yellow there. And behind it, quite an early Trabant. We'll get a better look at one of those earlier Trabants a little bit later in this compilation. But I actually quite like the shape of those little Trabbies. Very, very neat little car. Two-stroke, of course. And two wonderful vehicles here. On the left, we have a Lance Bulldog. Uh, quite an amazing oily rag of that one. And I do like the van alongside. That's a Borgward two-tone Borg Ward. What a fantastic pair of vehicles. Like I say, such a treat to see vehicles that we just don't see here in the UK. And a classic Mercedes here, another Heck Flosser or Fintail Mercedes Saloon. These are available with either petrol or diesel engines. And 
Next up, DAF history here. We've got a DAF 55 coupe on the left, and on the right, the Volvo 66, which was basically a DAF design, but Volvo took DAF over, badged it as a Volvo, and put it into production. Hence, the Volvo 66, the green Volvo shown there. A bit more Unimog action here. Go anywhere vehicles. Absolutely fantastic. These are excellent little vehicles. These are very, very popular with forestry related businesses, that kind of thing. Quite a groovy looking VW here, based on the Beetle, of course. Uh, if you know any more about the specification of this particular vehicle and an idea of the age, please let me know in the comments, because I'm not too well up on these earlier VWs. Looks like a four-wheel drive, judging by the ride heights, but is it, or am I miles off? Let me know in the comments, please. Oh, look at this. Handily, it's got the date above the cab, 1952. It's a Megairus Deutz again, and this one looks like it's been converted into a camper. But yeah, what a great looking vehicle that is. That is just fantastic. I do like that a lot. Let me know in the comments which of these cars you would be offering a home to if indeed the opportunity ever arose. A couple of classic Mercs here now from the, what, late 60s or early 1970s, more likely. I think these are the W114 and 115 series cars. Yeah, really, really sturdy, well put together cars. Not overly flashy by any means, but very good quality. And <laughs> wow, look at that. A Maybach, in fact. I had to do a bit of research on that one. This is a Maybach SW38 Roadster, dating to 1938 with a spoon. Body, S-P-O-H-N, is the spelling of that particular coach builder. Left on drive, of course, but what, a, what an incredible looking car that is. We've just got a general overview of this classic car show held in and around Berlin in 2023. We've got a bit of everything there. DKW Auto Union, BMW's various Mercedes, there's a Toyota Land Cruiser, and even a Nissan Micra in the foreground. So a bit of everything there. A bit of classic Japanese here, a Nissan Sunny Coupe, I think this is one of the B11 series cars uh, from the early 1980s. Alongside it, a Volvo 144, very very nice too, I can also see an E30 BMW 3 series and a 2CV van just appearing over the back of the Nissan there. And look at this, I don't know much about this one, other than it is a Setra 580 coach, it would appear with very very tinted windows, so maybe this one has been converted into a camper. But no, I like that one. I like those wheel trims as well. They're particularly eye-catching, I think. And as you know, if you watch the old classic car channel for any length of time, I'm very, very fond of old estate cars. And look at this fantastic Mercedes. And this is the 220D. It's an E-Class of the early 1970s, based on the W115 series chassis. Left-hand drive, of course. And that looks like a very, very usable car indeed. How about this? You used to see these all the time here in the UK, the, the fastback hatchbacks and the saloons. It's a Honda Accord, a four-door Honda Accord, presumably early 1980s at a date, perhaps. Uh, we're on familiar territory now, a Mark III version of the Triumph GT6 here showing off. It's two litre straight six engine and you can clearly see in this photo just how easy it is to work on the engine of these cars and in fact the, the related Triumph Spitfires as well with that lift up front bonnet. Really, really practical classic there. And there's a rear view of it. You can see why many people call these the, the Mini E-Type or the poor man's Jaguar E-Type. Very, very nice indeed. at this another Borg Ward this van has been obviously converted and again into being like a firefighting vehicle of some description I really really like that the van and indeed the trailer alongside it which appears to be full of lots and lots of goodies and there's a really interesting pale blue vehicle just on the right hand side there which we'll look at later next up we have another example of the Alfa Romeo Giulia four-door saloon of course, there's a VW Beetle alongside. There's always going to be lots of those at classic car shows in Germany. Another example of the E30 BMW behind the 3 Series in cabriolet form here. And oh, another classic Brit here. The good old Austin Healey Sprite Mark 1. Left-hand drive, German registered, of course. Surrounded by 
some interesting cars there's a 2002 on the left another 124 series estate mercedes behind there i can just see a white mg behind the sprite there and here is that wonderful pale blue vehicle we just saw a little glimpse of before this is a primus or a primus diesel powered p14 truck uh, also called the zug machina apparently built in 1937 and what an amazing little vehicle this is it's like an articulated little vehicle a bit like our what's the yeah the scamel scarab it reminds me of a little bit very very neat little vehicle indeed obviously designed to tow trailers in very tight spaces but i really really like that i've never ever seen one of these before what a treat to see this one there's a brochure scan presumably from the late 1930s and there's a rear view of the primus with the uh, the engine on display there what a great little vehicle that is i suggest looking this one up on google if you want to find out a little bit more detail about these curious little commercial vehicles i've never ever heard or seen one of these before back to classic alfa romeos and we have another example of the julia the four-door julia saloon two photographs now of another classic italian car here this beauty in white is a fiat 2300 s coupe very very sleek looking car indeed from i think the late 1960s i would have thought the date of this particular car and the caravan behind it looks pretty groovy as well i've not seen one of those before there's a rear three-quarter view of the same car coupled up to that classic caravan hung off the back so clearly a very very practical car and a useful tow car i mean it has got 2.3 liter engine six cylinder engine so i'm guessing it's got enough grunt to pull a caravan but i guess that's a combination you wouldn't see very often on the roads nowadays and a very very boxy mercedes next quite an interesting little vehicle i remember seeing a camper one of these a couple of years ago but that's the only one i've ever seen We've got an S-Class on the right. You can just see a 123 Series Estate over on the left there. And that limousine in the background. The Fintel limousine. Back to Audi is here. Very, very smart. I think this is an Audi 100. Probably one of the C1, the facelifted versions of the C1. Which was introduced in September of 1973. Quite a handsome, elegant looking car. Really, really nice. Great to see out of. Lots of windows. Uh, great, great car. Back to France now for the source of this particular car, left-hand drive Peugeot, it's a 204 Cabriolet, very very nice, 1130cc, I think the engine fitted to these particular cars, and slightly smaller understudy to the larger 304 Cabriolet, quite an elegant little car these I think. And a bit of classic lorry action here, we've got a blue Hanno Mag Marcant, I believe is the name, looking at the grille there. Several different uh, models of uh, ha Hanno Mag were produced, apparently, and this is the Mark Ant. Again, if you know more about these, please fill me in. I've got a Citroen DS here, parked alongside a slightly smaller, older design Citroen, the 2CV. And there's that Honda Accord just on the left-hand side there. So it's always worth having a look in the background of these uh, photographs as well, just to see what else you can spot, because there are bound to be other cars that are available around the area okay now what is this is it an iso i'm trying to read that legend on the front of this little motorbike here um, is that an iso as in iso griffo perhaps is it part of the same company or am i misreading that entirely it's a great looking little bike though back to classic dafts a daf 55 here what a great looking car that is there's a nice split window vw camper in the background there and i can just see a shadow two a silver shadow two peeking in on the left hand side of the photo there you can see the rubber bumpers of the shadow two as opposed to the shadow one and what a fantastic mercedes lorry we have here i don't have much information on this one but all i know is it's a fantastic looking vehicle is that is that lufthansa logo on the door it reminds me a little bit of it but i'm sure it's probably something else got a vw on the left and a mercedes two now what are we looking at here a Mitsubishi, I'm guessing early 1990s perhaps. Not really an area I know much about. I'm guessing maybe a Sigma or a Galant, something along those lines. We've got a JDM, old school sticker in the windscreen. JDM, Japanese domestic market. So presumably an import from Japan. 
this this is a bit more at my street if i'm honest a maroon opal capitan these were built this particular version was built from 1951 through to 1953 only had a two and a half liter six under engine so i'm guessing it rolled along those autobahns very very nicely indeed very american inspired styling there and okay now we have a lancia fulvia not the sporty little fulvia but the four-door saloon version of berlina and what a beautiful example this is we'll see two photos of this particular car but yeah it's a really handsome looking italian car i like that there's a rear three-quarter view of the same car with the lovely Lancia Fulvia script on the back panel there. I'm sure Harley will like that one. It's just a very elegant, stylish looking car. And the rear lights are very similar to those on the sportier two-door Fulvias. And wow, we've seen some Mercedes-based campers so far, but nothing quite like this. What an incredible vehicle this is. Who built this? Is it a one-off? Or is this something that you could have gone and bought back in the 1970s? It's good to see a classic Mini there, just on the left-hand side as well. Complete with opening quarter lights. So maybe it's an Innocenti. Okie dokie, classic Renault action here, courtesy of a five-door Renault 16. That's a very, very smart example indeed, with a Citroen DS just parked behind it. But yeah, those Renaults are really sharp-looking cars, I think. You don't see enough of those around here in the UK. Well, classic Trabant time again. This is a quite a late one. This has got the uh, VW Polo engine in it, so no longer two-stroke, slightly different grille on it. But wow, look at the camping attachment on the roof. What a great looking thing that is. You want to be careful stepping out of that uh, tent in the morning, because otherwise you might get a bit of a shock. Okay, just a general view of the show area here. We've got a bit of everything here. We've got a Mercedes. You can see some VW Sirocco's. There's a Honda at the back there. Yeah, a bit of everything. Is that a, a Vauxhall Calibra with its tailgate up as well? Or probably the Opal equivalent. And now we have the second generation, if you like, version of the Chevrolet Corvair, the Corvair Corsa. There were a couple of different models available, the Corsa and the Monza. Some were fixed head coupes like this, and also there was a convertible version as well. All of them rear-engined. They had a flat six air-cooled engine in the back. They sound fantastic. If you saw the video that I did of the New Year's Day meeting 2024 at the Black Swan, you'll get some really good sounds of one of these as it pulled away. Absolutely great sounding car. Flat six. They always sound good. Very 911-ish in sound. And there's a BMW Neue class here in front. Okie dokie. Back to the early 1970s. We have a long wheelbase limousine version of the Mercedes, the 114 series Mercedes. What a great little caravan here. Is this a folding caravan? It looks a bit like one. And the car alongside, that's a favorite of mine, the Volvo PV544, probably dating to the early 1960s, I would have thought. Mine was a 64, I ran one of those for a while. Very, very nice car. Drives so well. And another general view of the classic car show here near Berlin. We've got a Ford Mustang in the foreground and various other vehicles dotted around going off into the distance there. Some old campers there as well, some VW-based campers. We've got a Dodge Ram camper there as well. A couple of classic Japanese Toyota Celicas here. The notch back in the foreground and there's a fastback alongside it in white. And next to that, new Renault 4, the good old Renault 4 complete with period roof rack, which I approve of greatly. I always like a nice roof rack. So matching pair of Zundaps here. Interesting to see those. C50 Sports. I um, wonder if they belong to the same person. I assume so. And we have a trio of classic Mercedes in the background, including that wonderful 220D E-Class station wagon or combi estate. Very, very neat indeed. We've seen one Cetra already. And here is another, presumably, again, converted to be a classic camper. And on the left-hand side, with the roof down, Mark 1 version of Mazda's MX-5. And here we have the Opel Cadet. This is very similar to our Mark 1 Vauxhall Astra, but of course in Germany they had Opels, we had Vauxhalls typically. And this is the Cadet Estate. Very, very sharp looking car indeed. The 
Porsche, of course. And this is a 356 Speedster. What is that mighty car in the background as well? Is that a, is that a Buick? I think it could be. But yeah, a bit of everything at this particular show. There's another view of the Speedster, very similar in a way to the 356 convertible, but much lower roofline to give it a slightly sleeker look. And there's an MGB alongside a left-hand drive chrome bumper, MGB on wires. Very, very nice too. And again, some interesting cars in the background too. Mercedes 206D camper van next. Very, very neat old vehicle. But what's that black car just on the left, just out of shot? Answers on the postcard, please. And I can also see a nice old bicycle as well, just on the right-hand side, leaning against the front of the Mercedes. And who remembers these? The Thermador car cooler. A bit of an early form of air conditioning, if you like. These had usually filled with either water or ice, perhaps, and the water would pass through that into the cabin of the car. Cooled air would pass into the cabin of the car, so handy if you are in a very hot climate. That's a very neat thing indeed. And here we have a close-up of the front of a BMW. I think this is probably a 501. These are available either with a six-cylinder or V8 engines. And an equally smart Mercedes-Benz just parked alongside it. But those BMWs, you don't see those very often at all. I think the last one of those I saw was at a meeting at Goodwood many years ago. And to finish this part one, if you like, of this video, we have a Mazda, an E2000, presumably being used as a camper. And now we'll be moving on to another show also in 2023 that Oliver kindly photographed and sent over very, very recently. So let's go and have a look and see what turned up there. And here we go. And we begin with another Mazda, very earlier, much earlier Mazda 929 or the Loose, the coupe version of the Loose, as it was badged, I think, in the home market. This is apparently an LA, LA2 Series 1 introduced in 1973. There's a rear three-quarter view of this 929 Coupe. Were these ever sold here in the UK? They may have done, but would have been in very, very small numbers. These were built until 1976, before being replaced by a newer version. Like I say, we're at a different show now, also in the Berlin area, but also in 2023. Okie dokie, classic VW Beetle here in the foreground. What else have we got? Red car at the back there reminds me very much of the car that appeared in the Christine film. If you've ever seen that one, um, you'll remember the car well. But yeah, lots and lots of different cars there, and I'm sure we'll get a closer look at some of those as we go along. This beauty is a 1935 to 1942 streamlined Peugeot 402. What an incredible car that is. Three different wheelbase options were available on these cars. And very, very similar looking to our Hillman Imps in many ways. This is the rear-engined NSU Prince, or Prince, as it translates to. But yeah, this one looks to be in really good condition, finished in beige. Several photos now of the Honda S800. This particular S800 is, of course, the coupe. You could get the open-top roadster version as well, but this is the fixed-head coupe. Similar lines, in a way, to the GT6 that we were looking at only a few moments ago, but probably a bit smaller still. Great little cars. These are the rev really, really highly. Incredible little engines in them. There's a quick peek at the driver's view, the driver's side of the cockpit. Very, very simple layout. Very, very neat and elegant. Nothing that doesn't need to be there. And a lovely steering wheel, the wood rim steering wheel. That's very stylish as well. Very Italian in inspiration, I suspect. And there's a front three-quarter view of the same car with its bonnet raised. Really, really great little car, but I'm not sure that I will actually fit in one because they are pretty small. There's a high level view of just some of the cars at this particular event. We've got a bit of everything. Nice to see a Jaguar XJS Cabriolet there alongside the VW Golf. We've got a stretched 700 series Volvo as well. Various Mercedes, some motorcycles and mopeds in the foreground. So something for everyone there. And how about this for a bit of variety? Uh, we've got an Alfa Romeo, a little Julius Saloon on the left, which looks great on those wheels, by the way. We've got a Porsche 356 Coupe, and alongside it, that's one of those Excaliburs. 
probably built in the 1980s but with a few styling cues of cars much much older intriguing vehicle okay and next up a three-quarter view of the russian moskvich uh, <laughs> really interesting car two strokes a bit of a smoker but you don't see many of these around now We've seen IFAs, I think, on the channel before, but have we seen an IFA lorry? Probably not. Um, but this looks like a very chunky old fella, doesn't it? There's a hefty winch on the back as well. I wonder what this one's used for. Bit of Britishness in this particular corner of the field. Not one, but two Reliant three-wheelers. I never would have expected to see those at a classic car show in Germany. And they are divided by a classic mini those are popular in germany i'm sure but the reliance i'm amazed to see those there what a cracking little car this is this is an opal record these were introduced this series of opal record was introduced i think in 1953 continued in production till about 57 it was a replacement for the earlier olympia but that's quite a handsome little car i think very very nice and several classic bmws here We've got several of the E32 7 Series BMWs, um, but the second car along is a 635 CSI most likely. Different engines were available, there was a 633 as well in that coupe two-door form, but it's probably a 635, surrounded by a few 7 Series. Another classic Brit here, so always good to see these. We've got a Triumph TR3 left-hand drive. I wonder if this has always been in Germany or maybe it went to America first and then came back to Europe at some point in more recent years. If you know the history of this car, please let me know in the comments. In the rear view now of the Ford Taunus or Taunus, the XL version. This was the sort of same era and very similar in design to our Mark III version of the Ford Cortina. And the bright yellow MGB Roadster parked alongside it, complete with the export lamps on the back wings. Three classic Mercs here. We've got a pair of 114 or 115 saloons in the foreground and an S-Class parked just a little bit further away from the camera. But I think the S-Class is probably the one I'd go for out of that three. Another lovely little Renault here. We have the four-door Renault 12 saloon. This one finished in bright, bright orange. So this was a contemporary of the Renault 16 hatchback that we saw just a few moments ago. Now I do like oddball little small cars and this is the Lloyd Alexander. This is a little combi, a little estate car. And I do love those rear lamps just perched on the top of the back wings, very similar to some of the Borg wards, I think. But yeah, what a great little car that is. Dwarfed by the VW Polo parked alongside. Next to the wonderful Mercedes Coupe, very, very swish indeed, is a lovely, lovely Ecuria Cos Blue, almost, Jaguar Mark II Saloon on chrome wire wheels. Now, what engine's that? 2.4, 3.4, or possibly the 3.8. Could be manual, or it could be automatic. And how about a classic, or vintage even, motorcycle, a BSA, the good old British BSA, um, complete with sidecar as well so what a great setup that is and i love some of the little accessories on the back there including that little oil can strapped to the toolkit what a fantastic setup that is and three really unusual cars here none of which you'd probably see all that often here in the uk we've got a gogomobile on the left in the middle i think that's a moskvich 407 uh, i've never seen one of those before and alongside that's a fiat 600 a bath which looks very very purposeful indeed but that Moskvich is really, really nice. Now, I think we're looking here at the Fiat 500C Belvedere, the estate version of the Topolino, or it could be the Simca equivalent. I'm not quite sure if this is a Simca or the original Fiat, but either way, very, very appealing little car. Classic Wartburg in the foreground, and anyone who's been on the channel for a while will recognise the little blue car as being a Renault 4CV, slightly darker blue than our car, and this is an original left-hand drive, so presumably built in France, but yeah, what a neat little car that is, we'll see that again just in a few moments. And sticking with Wartburg for a moment, look at this, a pickup version 
of the Wartburg. What a rarity that must be. There must be so few of those around. Absolutely incredible. These little light commercials usually get run into the ground after just a few years of hard work. So this one to survive is just a real treat. And there we go. There's a rear three quarter view of the rear engined Renault 4 CV. All 748 cc of it hung out the back there. Hence all the louvers on the rear panel. And the filler below the rear window is not a fuel filler, that is the coolant filler. So don't go putting petrol in there because you'll end up with very big problems. Okay, we've got a BMW, one of the O2 series cars, maybe a 2002 or a 1602. And next to it, the larger BMW E3 series saloon. These were available with a 2.5, 2.8, 3 litre or 3.3 fuel injected engine. So quite a variety to choose from. And here a couple of classic bay window VW campers, complete with a folding caravan in the middle. What a great setup that is. I do like that wall as well. Ooh, what do we have here? A Triumph Vitesse Estate. Presumably this isn't a factory built car, so this is probably a combination of Triumph Vitesse and the estate rear body from a Triumph Herald Estate. And it's on some very nice looking, quite wide steel wheels. The hubcaps look a bit like those off a of Lotus Cortina. But yeah, what a great looking car that is. I like the tinted glass in the back as well. That's really, really great looking car. There was a vehicle very similar to that at Bista that I spotted and included in a video in 2023. That was a Vitesse estate as well, which had been built up by some enterprising owner in more recent years. A couple of real classics here. We've got a Ford Taurus. I think, I think that is a 17M, one of the P3 series cars introduced in 1960. And next to that, an Opel GT, the very swoopy looking Opel GT. What a great looking sporty car that is. I really do like those a lot. And we've got another Corvair on the right hand side here. We've had this Series 2 and this is the earlier car, the Series 1, the car that Ralph Nader did a book all about because he wasn't too impressed with the car's handling. Next to that we have an Opel Record B complete with a Power Glide badge on the grille which suggests automatic transmission. And talking of automatic transmission, I'm sure that's the case with this mighty Ford Fairlane convertible. What a, what a bonkers looking car that is. Fins, bronze metallic paint, and facing it, a little Renault 4. Now it looks American, but this is in fact Russian. This is the Gaz Chaika, built from, I think, 1958 all the way through to 1981. Didn't make many of them. 5.5 litre V8 engine, I believe, under the bonnet. So really it was reserved for dignitaries because your, your common uh, motorist in Russia, he'd be lucky to get hold of a larder, let alone one of these. Now, is that an original paint scheme? Well, I think most of these were probably finished in black, to be honest. Um, so this uh, probably has had a slightly brighter colour scheme applied to it in more recent years. But what an incredible car and very American inspired styling there. There it is again. And in the foreground, we have a Porsche 944. Still plenty of these classic cars shown in Germany coming up. And here we've got a 1930 Ford Model A two-door saloon. That is a very practical pre-war car if you ever fancy something of that age. Very, very nice indeed. Handy to have the build year on the plate on the front of the radiator there. So thanks to the owner for that. And I think we are back to Russia. And this, I think, is a Volga. Again, this is a car that I don't think was ever sold here in the UK, or if it did, in tiny numbers only. So I've never seen one, but I'm pretty sure this is a Volga. Uh, what year it is? Could be late 70s, early 1980s. I'm not quite sure on that one. But yeah, great to see it. And how about this lovely split window VW pickup? In the background is a little Innocenti Mini, which we'll see more of a little bit later in this particular collection.
Okay, a bit of a general look again at the show field here. We've got a BMW 1600, not 1602. So I'm not sure if that particular version was ever sold here in the UK. We did get the 1602s and a pair of Opel GTs alongside that, plus a variety of other classic cars, Mercedes and Alpha and so on. Now this is a really nice looking car. In two-tone green, this is an EMW. Uh, which stands for, now yeah, let's try this, Eisenacher Motorrennwerk, I think, which was uh, built at what was a BMW factory prior to the Second World War. It had to rename itself, so it became EMW, E for Eisenacher. And yeah, very handsome looking car indeed, and I can't imagine there are too many of these around now either. Many, many classic cars at this particular meeting. We've got a couple of Mercs there. We've got a front view of that two-door Ford Taunus and the bright yellow MGB Roadster. There's a Trabant alongside that. I can see an E28 BMW in the middle, just a couple of rows back. So, yeah, a bit of everything at this show. And look at this, it's early 1980s Saab 900. This is one of the earlier cars with a flat front, the flat grille and headlights. And that would be revised with a sort of slopier grille and headlights just a couple of years after this car was built. This one is probably early to mid-1980s, I would have thought. And look at this. Would you expect to see one of these at a car show in Germany, registered on the German plate? The Wolseley 1500, a right-hand drive car, so I'm guessing it probably started life here in the UK and went over to Germany at some point. But yeah, great to see this one. Such a long way from home. Uh, back to German cars now, of course, and we've got a beige Audi. This is an Audi 60 LS, very similar looking to the Audi 80. The styling was very, very similar indeed. This is a two-door saloon, nice looking, quite a handsome looking car. And there's a rear three-quarter view of the same car. I like the Audi mud flaps and the exhaust extension as well. Is that original? Not quite sure what shape it is, but it does look good and very in keeping for that era of car, I think. Continuing this collection, we have a Ferrari. This is a Ferrari Mondial mid-engine V8 car. These were introduced, I think, in about 1980 or thereabouts and produced through to 1993. And two very different classic cars here, but both equally welcome at any classic car show. On the left, we've got the American Mercury of the, what, late 1950s, I guess. Uh, next to it, from the 1970s, a rubber bumper MGB Roadster. We saw the Borgward Estate, or the Combi before, and now we've got the Borgward Isabella in coupe form. Very, very stylish looking car indeed. We do occasionally see these at shows. I think I saw one of these at the NEC only last year. And so they do pop up occasionally here. Um, but yeah, really, really nice to see that. And clearly a Fiat design, probably based on the Fiat 128, I think from memory. This is the Zastava 1100. This one finished in bright orange, four-door. Quite an interesting car. I do remember these on sale here in the UK. But again, like so many of the cars in all of us photographs, I haven't seen one for donkeys of years. And there's a rear view of the same car. I well remember these Zastava and Yugo dealerships dotted around the UK back in the 1980s. We appear to have a gathering of Mopars here, and in the foreground, unless I'm very much mistaken, we have a Plymouth Satellite, a two-door hardtop version with sort of pillarless windows there, so you can wind the front door window and the rear quarter window down as well for that very open, airy cabin, as you can see demonstrated there. Okay, we're back to Ford Tornuses again. I think this is a 17M, but I could be wrong. And at first I thought it was an estate, but in fact, I think with that high roof line, I think we're probably looking at a hearse, hence the uh, <laughs> the two people shown sat inside it there. Well, that must be a really rare survivor, probably very low mileage as well. And we're back to classic Opals and another beautiful shot of the Opal GT. Clearly Oliver likes very similar cars to me. I would have photographed all these myself had I been to this particular show. So that's a lovely looking car.
back to classic Trabants, and here we have the Trabant 600. These were only built for three years, from 1962 to 1965. You could get the standard, a deluxe, and an estate car version, a combi version of the little Trabant 600. And I think they are quite nice looking little cars. Somewhat larger though, is this, the Tatra 603, built in Czechoslovakia as was. A second generation car, second generation version of the 603. Air-cooled V8 at the back, but really incredible looking car. That paint scheme reminds me of police cars for some reason, but I'm sure it wasn't. And there you can see in the back a bit of a glimpse to the air-cooled V8 there. A couple of big exhausts stuck out the back, and I do love those huge air intakes set into the rear wings as well. Bigger versions of those fitted to R4 CV, but what an incredible car that is. That must be an amazing thing to drive around in. There's a quick look at the cockpit. So it's actually a fairly simple dashboard. We've got a nice little radio in the middle of the dash there, various items of switch gear and what looks like. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what we're looking at there. I think that's the handbrake lever, the big chrome lever sticking out under the uh, dashboard there. And that's a really, really interesting car. Another variety there from left to right. We've got a little Renault 4, another Mercedes 114 or 115, and the Ford Granada, the Mark 1 Granada. Uh, Left-hand drive, this particular car. Looks like it's got some extra lamps on it, and non-original wheels, I suspect. These are really, really nice little cars. I filmed one of these only very recently at Bista Heritage. The lovely Alpine, or Alpine rather, A110. Lovely little rear engined car, very, very popular in rallying. And that is presumably what this one is used for as well. I love all the period livery on it as well. And here are a couple of great little cars, little Taurus. These are IFAs, which were based on the pre-war DKW F8. A tiny engine, only two cylinders, 684cc. So really quite small, dainty little cars. Pre-war DKW, post-war IFAs. And there is a photo of an IFA heading out, presumably on a bit of a road run, I think. Well, here's an interesting car. At first glance, it looks a bit like one of the 400 series Ferraris, but this is the Bitter SC, which relied on Opal power for propulsion. So that's quite an unusual car, that is. I don't think a huge number of those were built back in the 1980s. But yeah, quite a sleek looking coupe. A lovely Mercedes is next, and what's that parked alongside? Very, very similar car to one I had just a few years ago, a Volvo PV444. That's quite an early one. The 1.4 litre engine and split windscreen and also the split two-piece rear window you can just see as well which makes it one of the very early 444s and a general view now of the show field again Got a cracking little alpha julia in the foreground and also to the left hand side of the photo as well there's a carmen vw convertible just peeking out the background there and a lovely oval window beetle saloon as well so yeah plenty to keep volkswagen enthusiasts happy at this show and we have another example of the Lancia Fulvia Saloon. No photos of the sporty two-door Lancia Fulvias, but a couple of sets of photos of the saloon. That's quite a rare thing to do. You hardly ever see these around. Now, here is that little Innocenti Mini we saw before in black. Two photos of this one. This is the Innocenti Mini di Tommaso. So Innocenti rebodied the Mini um, and uh, came up with this little three-door hatch design, which is something that British Leyland should probably have done and eventually did do with the Metro, I guess. And there's a really three-quarter view of it, but this is the Di Tommaso, the, the tuned-up version, hence the, the body kit and the alloy wheels and the twin exhausts out the back. So this was very much a sporty version of the Innocenti Mini, and what a great-looking little car that is. Still quite a few photos of cars at these German classic car shows to come. And here a couple of classic Brits which will be familiar to regulars here on the channel of course. We've got a Series 1 E-Type fixed head coupe and that Wolseley 1500 again. A lovely blue example of the Wolseley 1500 with its little 1500cc B-Series engine under that bonnet. Real interesting mix here. We've got a BMW iZ, a bubble car on the left. A Triumph TR3A in the middle, I like the TR registration, and also another Wartburg 311. Those Wartburgs get everywhere. 
We've got a 911 in the background and a selection of VW Beetles as well. There's a rear view of the same lineup, the Mercedes, Wartburg and the little Triumph TR. And there in the background is that Ford Model A Saloon, another Trabant and yeah, quite a few different cars. And love the S-Class Mercedes on the left hand side there from the 1970s and I do like those quite a lot. Now here's a bit of an oddball one, this is the Opel Rally Cadet, R-A-L-L-Y-E, Rally Cadet Coupe. Uh, these had twin carburetors and a bit tuned up. I think the earlier cars were only about 1.1 litre engines. A little bit later that was enlarged to 1.9 litres. But yeah, that's a nice looking car. And who remembers these? We definitely had these here in the UK, but it's many years since I last saw one of these Nissan Prairies. Quite an early MPV, I suppose you'd call that. A bit like the Renault Espace of the 1980s. That would have been a rival to this particular car, but it's a long time since I've seen one of these anywhere here in the UK. And to round out, a beautiful little Austin 7 Tourer, four-seat Tourer. At first I thought it may be the Opel, but they were two-seaters. So I think this is just the Ruby-based Tourer of the mid to late 1930s. So thank you so much to Oliver for kindly sending over the memory stick with all these photographs taken at two classic car events in Germany in 2023. It was a real treat to go through these photos and share them with you here on the old Classic Car channel. So big thumbs up to Oliver for that. If you've got any photographs of shows elsewhere, maybe France or in Spain or somewhere, somewhere abroad, which might and contain a different selection of cars to those that regularly feature here on the channel. If you're able to send them over to me, it would be great to feature them here. So big thanks to Oliver for that. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of thing. And there'll be plenty more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.